I'm here. <laughs> Wait! Who's there? You <laughs> won't respond to that. Oh my god. Y'all. Oh, I mean, what? We just stumbled. Ooh. You guys are the ticker fit, y'all. Um, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared for you. Who is at your house? Of course. <laughs> you know, my, uh, um, so, okay. yeah. So, <laughs> look, y'all, we got so much. We, we've done so much. Um, our co-producer, Nathaniel, is here, Butter. We got some. Um, Yo. that, you got a new outfit. Uh, okay. <laughs> a little something. A little razzle dazzle. Well, okay. Giving <laughs> Mar Mario realness. Um. Um, <laughs> I'm um, we just we just learned a lot. I know you were watching. Um, thank y'all. Yes, to, to it was very uh, very informative. Yeah. Um, you know I love a drink. Yes, you do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not an alcoholic, so not too much. But just to have those, uh, you know, both of them come on and really just share some knowledge on black owned brands, um, and even some of the. Um, laws and the do's and don'ts was just super super duper informative um we definitely have to have them back on i thought that what she said about how they make it so where the speaking of the laws um that if you're not doing millions of barrels that you can't even have a distillery which yeah that's that kind of just super duper crazy because i i feel like here in america we live in such a mass produced fast society that we do not focus on the actual small quantity things. Like everybody wants to replicate greatness. However, they want to do it to the thousand power and they lose the true ingredient. Well, no. So no, that's not what I mean. Um, what I mean is saying what they want to do is make sure that small businesses don't get on the level of big businesses. That's what, that's what I'm saying. Truly about. I mean, yeah, you were saying about the quality, but it's it, I think it holds the black people down, as they were saying, just because it's it's, it's really hard to, to do what she's doing. Yeah, I'm I, I'm really um, amazed and shocked at at that aspect, and I'm happy that we were shown that because we didn't know we were going to see that tonight. So, yeah, it was it was super duper dope. Um, yeah. um, just to see the, the 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 information that was given and the black excellence and. Just the knowledge tricks that, that they had was just super duper dope, um, but it, it was great. Yeah. Johnny, um, I want to um, read what Johnny said. Johnny said, um, "David, can we get you to request, please?" Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, y'all. Who on David? Uh, we actually had David on um, a few shows back. He is a R&B and soul singer, and so I reached out to him to come to come and do our segment. What will we do? Oh, okay, David. It's a it's, it's monopoly for sure, but. Here in the U.S., they say that we're not supposed to have monopolies. So, I don't know. Everything is a game. Right. Oh, there he is. Okay. Hold on, hold on. You gotta say David's world, so I know. I'm like, yes, I'm sorry. Oh, David. David's world. You know, I, that's how mm -hmm. I know. Hello, hey, yo, David. Hi, David. How's it going? How are you? It's going great. Welcome. I'm busy. Okay. <laughs> Bay, 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 Bay has an EP coming out. Uh, talk about that real quick, if you can, before what will we do? Ooh, okay. So EP is called Babe Night Sun. It's coming out October 17th. And I'm actually sitting here getting ready for the Japanese release, which is coming up the same exact day. Um, and this is just basically about mental health, um, especially among black men. It's all about healing and the beginning of the healing journey. And it's actually part one of the Resurgence album. Right. Okay. Yes. Congra Congratulations. Congratulations. Yes. <laughs> so listen, we're going to jump right into yep. what will we do. It is a segment that we have here on the show where we have people to kind of ask us questions uh, about different topics and scenarios mm -hmm. about just some of the things that they go that they're going through. And I do want to let you know that they do get pretty spicy. So David, we would love to hear from you and get your opinion. <laughs> Ooh, spice, spice, spice. And because, because you are the guest, you have to go first in answering them. So welcome. 
<laughs> so first up, we have Chris from Brooklyn, New York. He says, so I've been working in my family's grocery store since I was a child. And I'm an adult, and I've been looking and searching for something new. I started a Twitter um, a few years ago and an OnlyFans, and let's just say I'm kind of popular. Um, I've worked hard in keeping my identity a secret from my family by wearing this ski mask due to my popularity. A lot of my followers have asked have asked me to travel from state to state, state to state to perform services like massages. Um, and I've done it a few times, and let's just say I've made more money than I ever have working in my family store. I love my Ooh. family and our business, but the opportunity to tour, uh, to tour around doing what I love to do as far as massages and sexual acts, i.e. being an escort, I just can't surpass because the money is really great. How would you all tell your family what would y'all do? Ooh, okay. This is going to be very controversial coming from me. I said, hey, just tell them. Just tell them. Like, you're of age at this point. I know that Black families, a lot of us are very conservative, um, and especially when it comes to sexuality, um, sexual act activity. But if you're proud of what you're doing, I mean, go for it. You know, sex work is work, sex positivity, all that kind, of, all that jazz. I mean, who's who am I to judge? Do what you do. Get get the bag. Okay, what do you think? Um, I have really agree. I definitely I uh, think. If you're going to continue to do that work, make sure you have some type of plan to uh, invest and make it ownership, since that is what we talked about on the show today. Um, make sure you eventually own your own platform. So work out of those and work into your own. Um, also, if you're going to continue to do sex work, um, I highly suggest that you protect yourself on on all ends because literally it is very dangerous and it's one of the only occupations that is not um, not protected by law. Well, okay. she used to be the governor. Depending yeah. on the state because prostitution is legal in some states. In Nevada. Um, Nevada, Rhode Island, there's a few. But um, I don't know. I mean, listen, I, I do agree that we need to start really looking at your own platform. Um, it's not hard to do. You can sell your own porn on your own website. Websites are very cheap now. Um, oh, Tennessee Johnny knows about that. Uncle Johnny made it. Um, yeah. Uncle Johnny, you an escort? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, what do you think? What? what is the mic just get dry? <laughs> um, I mean, listen. Get your bag, baby, however you get it, right? Um, you are an adult. Everyone is not always going to agree with what you do, i.e. your family. Uh, but as long as you're happy with what you're doing and you're fulfilled in however which way, then definitely do it, you know. Um, you don't have to tell them, but I'm sure that they're going to have questions as to how you're getting your money, how you live in a lifestyle you live, how are you able to pay bills and things like that. Um, and so if those questions come about, then definitely, uh, I just want to call be bold and let them know what's going on. I love it. I've so never let me ask y'all, have, would you guys ever be an escort? And let's say if you made, if you were making like really great money and you knew that the opportunity was there, so make really great money, what would you do? How do y'all say the celebrities are escorts and y'all don't know it? And there's a lot, there's escorts on this page right now. Like who? There is escorts on this page, and honestly, there's a lot of people that do stuff on the back end that never makes it, or well, does make it the light. But honestly, some people just learn how to manage it very well and just keep uh, keep it disguised in a dress. Listen, get your paper, boo. That's what I'll say. Tomorrow's never promised. You can always go to Amateur Night at Magic City. <laughs> <laughs> And David, and, have you been to Amateur Night in Magic City? Nope, but I, <laughs> nope. And there's your job test me one time. I'm just like, you know what? <laughs> Might <not> just drop <laughs> <that anyway. laughs> Okay, let's get inside our next, um, yeah. what will we do? 
We got five minutes. And this one is pretty spicy, so I'm gonna, we got five minutes, so I'm going to try to read fast. We got seven, seven minutes. Okay. So, <clears throat> this is Ashley from Little Rock, Arkansas. She says, so I was raised in a single-parent household by my wonderful dad, and let's just call him Frank. My mom was my mom was around, but she was always on the road chasing after some man. Growing up, I would always ask my mom why she didn't stay with my dad, and her reply was always the same. Your dad is a stick in the mud, and I, he wanted something different. Well, two weeks ago, I found out just what she meant. So my dad was out of town, and I needed my birth certificate because he kept it put up for me. So while searching in his room, I came, I came across something interesting. I found a machine with an 11 inch dildo attached to it and pictures of my dad with his butthole literally abused and hanging out. And the machine had to be just recently used because there was a clear and white substance on it. I was in shock. And now I'm trying to figure out how to look my dad in the eye knowing he likes what he likes. If you were me and found this, what would y'all do? I have no words. (laughs) I have no words, but listen... Baby, I support you, Dad. Hey, go for it. If you're Dad's roommate, you said 11 inch dildo. What would you do? Really, Malloy? <laughs> First, uh, I'd probably be like shocked, and then I'd probably laugh about it because, like, oh, hello. And then they would be like, "It's okay, Dad. I love you anyway." <laughs> I won't. I won't tell. I won't tell the uncles. I won't tell. Anybody. I won't tell them. <laughs> So, oh, Malloy, well, well, you're well versed in toys. <laughs> Give us your take. So, I just, <laughs> um, <laughs> I just really say, have a conversation with him. Bring him over a um, nice black on spirit and get him a little inebriated to tell the truth about what's going on with them toys. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, somebody said I would have been like, let me borrow it, Pop. <laughs> <laughs> Not after your pops have used it. You're supposed to be going around sharing. Sorry, it's boring. <laughs> I don't know. It's giving anal infection. I don't know if I'm going to borrow that. Well, why would you say that has a bad anal? I mean, <laughs> give us your take, Jeremy. Or uh, Jake. Um,. Listen, I feel like a lot of black men especially have not been able to express themselves sexually forever. Mm -hmm. Um, So I kind of feel like, hey, you know what? People are finding themselves. uh, Having a dildo in your ass does not mean you're gay. Um, It does not. It does not. Um, Okay. Let's just be very clear on that. Um, And you may, you know what? There is something in there that makes you come. True. If God wants you to have a dildo, let them eat cake. You just go for it. <laughs> just get your own. Uh, I agree uh, with you. Right. Like I agree see, with you, uh, Jager. Listen, um, see it. there's nothing more wrong with exploring your sexuality um, yeah. and finding out what you like and don't like. So, obviously, you know, your your father uh, found interest in, like, in having his anus thrashed. And that's perfectly fine. You know, if he enjoys that, that's great. That doesn't make your dad a homosexual. Um, he just likes what he likes in his private time. I'm sure you like certain things, too, in your private time, too. And he would be shocked if he knew. So, you know, it's your father. Just keep loving him. Um, <laughs> If it's a real Father's Day, give him another one to put in his gift bag. Right. And wrap it in a bow. And not a white one. A blue one. A blue. And always remember, Prince William is in the pegging. Oh. Well, uh-huh. he is. <laughs> okay. You went to the UK? That was a report that came from the UK. Oh. That brings wow. me to a question. Um, which I know some people, some of you all don't and do. Would y'all ever get paid? Would you let somebody pay y'all? Mm-mm. Malloy, I know your answer. <laughs> oh. Malloy. Yeah, there we go. I'm, I 
think. Are you there? No, no. I'm back. <laughs> back here for another <laughs> sponsored commercial. <laughs> well, I love it. Well, listen, you all don't have to answer, but that wraps up our segment for what will we do. It's been a pleasure. David, I want to tell you, thank you for taking the time to come on briefly. Um, we definitely have to get you back on the show. Even though it's about to talk about nothing but dildos. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but this has been a pleasure. Thank you, David. Lord Jake and Malloy, enjoy the rest of your Thank show. you. And I'm thank you, thank you. <laughs> Bye. Thank you guys for having me on. Make sure you, for a brief moment. Make sure you guys follow David. His EP uh, comes out in all, October. Sorry, August. Um, and it, it's being Japanese release and American release. Yay. It's going to be awesome. And we're announcing a surprise later on this week. So. Is it a good though? No. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> not really. No, not a bad. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> My God. I'm so tired tonight. No. We have to wait till Friday to hear, to hear that announcement. Call me off guard with that one. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming back on the yeah. show. Have an you. amazing evening. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, we're, we're gonna um we're gonna wrap um just because of the time frame as you know we are about to click off 